Hello there. CT anatomy of paranasal sinuses. Paranasal sinuses are divided into two types depending on their drainage. Anterior group and posterior group. Anterior group include all those sinuses that opens in the middle meatus and they include maxillary, frontal and anterior ethmoid air cells. The posterior group includes posterior ethmoid air sinus which opens in the superior meatus and sphenoid sinus which opens in the spheno-ethmoidal recess. As the picture shows, the uh, anterior sinuses in the red color, this is anterior ethmoid sinus, this is frontal sinus, this is maxillary sinus, all opening into the middle meatus area. While this posterior ethmoid sinus and sphenoid sinus, that is the posterior group, opens separately into their respective areas, that is posterior ethmoid sinus opens into the superior meatus, while sphenoid sinus opens into the sphenoethmoidal recess. And all these sinuses ultimately drains into the nasopharynx. Now coming on to the maxillary sinus, the, it is also known as the antrum of hymore and it is the largest paranasal sinus. It is pyramidal in shape as can be seen in the schematic picture. It is pyramidal in shape with, with its base that is the base of the pyramid towards the lateral wall of the nose and apex is towards or it is directed laterally into the zygomatic process with its roof is formed by the floor of the orbit and its floor is formed by the alveolar part of the maxilla. This is CT coronal CT image showing nasal septum, inferior turbinate. This is inferior turbinate, this is left inferior turbinate, middle turbinate, left middle turbinate and these are maxillary sinuses. This is right maxillary sinus, left maxillary sinus. As can be seen the maxillary sinus appears pyramidal in shape with its base is formed by the lateral wall of the nose and its apex is directed laterally into the zygomatic bone. This is zygoma. While its floor of the maxillary uh, sinus is formed by the uh, alveolar process of maxilla while its roof is formed by the inferior wall of the orbit. Now coming on to the osteomedial complex. Osteomedial complex is the final common pathway of drainage for frontal, maxillary and anti-ethmoid cells to middle meatus. That is all these sinuses drains into the middle meatus through osteomedial complex. The blockage of the osteomedial complex uh, prevents effective drainage thus leading to stagnation of secretions and therefore leading to recurrent or chronic sinusitis. Osteomedial complex. Osteomedial complex is not a single anatomical entity. It consists of the following structures. Maxi sinus ostium, ethmoid infundibulum, hiatus semilunaris, unsnate process, ethmoid bulla, middle meatus and middle turbinate. In this picture, this shaded portion indicates the OMC that is osteomedial complex. And the first component of osteomedial complex is this that is maxillary sinus ostium or maxillary sinus opening. Second is this ethmoid infundibulum, this bony process, this bony pathway is ethmoid infundibulum. Then this curvature uh, around this hiatus, uh, around this uncinate process is called hiatus semilunaris. And this process projecting from the inferior turbinate is called uncinate process. And then middle me um, turbinate and beneath this middle meatus are also components of the osteometal complex. Another component is this ethmoid bulla. A coronal CT image showing nasal septum, inferior turbinate, middle turbinate and maxillary sinus and showing the first component of uh, OMC that is maxillary sinus ostium as indicated by the red arrow. This is maxillary sinus ostium, the first component of OMC, which is leading to this uh, canal, this bony canal uh, called ethmoid infundibulum, the media, uh, medial wall of which is formed by the uncinate process, the lateral wall of which is formed by the orbital floor. And then this ethmoid infundibulum is leading into an area, a curved area, a curvature, and this curvature is called hiatus semilunaris, which is ultimately leading into the 
middle meatus. So these are the uh, with uh, middle meatus, and this is middle terminate, and this is an anterior ethmoidal cell called the ethmoid bulla. All these are components of the osteomyital complex. Now coming on to the frontal sinus, there are two sinuses on either side uh, situated between the outer and inner table of the frontal bone. As can be seen, uh, this is anterior table of the frontal bone, this is posterior table and between them there is an air containing cavity called the frontal sinus. Usually they are asymmetrical uh, and with an intervening bony septum between them which can be very thin or even be deficient. This is coronal CT image showing uh, nasal septum, bilateral nasal bone, right and left nasal bones and bilateral frontal sinuses with an intervening bony septum between them. This is axial CT image showing bilateral frontal sinuses with intervening bony septum between them. Now coming on to the drainage of frontal sinus. The drainage frontal sinus is through frontal recess. Frontal sinus drains through the frontal recess to middle meatus or into the ethmoid infundibulum. This is coronal CT image showing nasal septum. This is nasal septum. Inferior turbinates, right and left inferior turbinates and middle turbinate. This is right middle turbinate, left middle turbinate and uh, beneath the middle turbinate is middle meatus this must be middle meatus and these are two bilateral uh, frontal sinuses right frontal sinus and left frontal sinus so we can see the, here is uh, the opening of the frontal sinus frontal sinus uh, ostia which is leading into a track which is track when the track is leading up to the middle meatus and this track from frontal sinus into the middle meatus this bony channel is called frontal recess or frontonasal duct this helps in the drainage of frontal sinus uh, we can also see uh, this track can also be seen here this frontal sinus and there's a track from frontal sinus up to the middle meatus this track is called frontal recess another important thing uh, thing to be noted is there's a cell uh, this is an anterior ethmoid cell which is in close relationship with this frontal recess and this cell is called agar nasal cell the importance of this cell lies in the fact that if it is very large or it is highly pneumatized it can block frontal recess hence can block the secretions of the frontal uh, sinus leading to stagnation secretions of frontal sinus leading to chronic sinusitis of frontal sinus coming on to the ethmoid sinuses ethmoid before that let's first review the parts of ethmoid bone Ethmoid bone has three parts, the vertical plate, the horizontal plate and the ethmoid labyrinth. The vertical plate forms the nasal septum and the cristagli, the horizontal plate forms the cribriform plate and the ethmoid labyrinth consists of ethmoid sinuses. Now coming on to this picture, the CT coronal image showing nasal septum, uh, inferior turbinate and middle turbinate. Uh, uh, the, as we know, the vertical part forms the nasal septum and cristagli. So uh, this is the nasal septum. Uh, and this is uh, this extends upward as cristagli. This is the vertical part. The horizontal part forms this uh, is form uh, forms this cribriform plate. This is a cribriform plate and it is sieve like and it is perforated by the transmission of uh, olfactory nerves. And this uh, uh, cribriform plate also extends laterally as this uh, lateral lamella. This is called lateral lamella. This is an extension of cribriform plate. This is cribriform plate. This is cribriform plate uh, indicated by this uh, green arrow and this is lateral lamella indicated by the red arrow. Uh, it is also an extension of the cribriform plate and this part indicated by the black arrow is called ethmoid roof also known as fovea ethmoidalis. Uh, it is very prone to injury by iatrogenic injury or by uh, any trauma and can lead to CSF rhinorrhea. Coming on to the ethmoid sinuses, they are thin walled air cavities in lateral mass of the ethmoid bone. They vary in number from 3 to 18. And the ethmoid sinuses are divided into two groups, anterior and posterior ethmoid groups. Uh, and the ethmoid sinuses of the anterior group are usually smaller in size, 
more in number and drains the middle meatus while posterior sinuses are larger in size fewer in number and drains in the superior meatus you can see the anterior ethmoid sinus which is small and posterior ethmoid sinus which is large so clinically the division of anterior and posterior ethmoid air cell is made by basal lamella so what is this basal lamella there is a coronal ct image showing this is nasal septum uh, inferior terminate middle terminate so the middle terminate as can be seen is attached to the lateral wall of the orbit sorry medial wall of the orbit through this structure through this base and this base is called this structure is called basal lamella and it is the division between anterior and posterior ethmoid cells so the cells the ethmoid cells anterior to the basal lamella are anterior ethmoid cells and posterior to this uh, are posterior ethmoid cells also this can be seen in this picture the axial ct showing uh, middle turbinate it is attached to the medial wall of the orbit through this structure called the basal lamella and cells anterior, anterior to this are anterior ethmoid cells and posterior to this are posterior ethmoid cells again can we see in the sagittal image showing middle turbinate attached to the uh, orbit and cells anterior to this are anterior ethmoid cells posterior to this are posterior ethmoid cells another important structure is lamina papyracea which is thin paper like bone uh, this uh, bone uh, is called lamina papyracea it is a very thin paper like bone and it is it divides the orbit and it is the only division between orbit uh, and the uh it might air cells so uh, it can it is very thin so it can easily be destroyed leading to the spread of ethmoid infection into the orbit that means the ethmoid sinusitis can lead to orbital cellulitis so coming on to the sphenoid sinus um, there are two sphenoid sinuses right and left separated by a thin strip of bony septum they are present in the body of sphenoid <coughs> coronal ct may showing bilateral sphenoid sinuses this right sphenoid sinus left sphenoid sinus with a bony septum in between the relations of sphenoid sinus include inferiorly there is nasal um, fossa or nasopharynx superiorly there is pituitary fossa and on both the sides there are there lies the cavernous sinuses this is the area of cavernous sinuses this is anterior glenoid process anterior glenoid process and this is foramen rotundum this is Uh, vidian canal so coming on to the drainage of sphenoid sinus the sphenoid sinus drains through the sphenoid sinus ostium which opens through an anterior sphenoid wall into the sphenoethmoidal recess which is posterior to the superior turbinate so this is sagittal ct image showing inferior turbinate this is inferior turbinate this is middle turbinate and this is superior turbinate and this is sphenoid sinus and this is the wall of the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus and this is uh, ostium of the sphenoid sinus which is opens to the just posterior to the uh, superior terminate and this is called sphenoethmoidal recess again in the axial image the, these are two bilateral uh, sphenoid sinuses opens to the sphenoid sinus opening into the sphenoethmoidal recess thank you